I'm going to teach you an extremely easy beginner friendly method for taking any sketch and turning it into a stunning vector illustration using Adobe Illustrator. And as my gift to you, I'm going to provide a free download of my base sketch in the description below, just in case you want to use it to follow along in this tutorial. But of course, you're more than encouraged to use your own sketch for this. So let's dive in. So first things first, simply take your sketch and take a direct overhead photo in a well-lit space. Try and avoid taking the photo at an angle because the perspective will distort your art. Another option is using a photocopier, but not everyone has one of those lying around. Also, side note, if you have a graphics tablet or an iPad and prefer to use this to create your sketch, that's totally fine too. Okay, next, send that photo to your computer in any way you like. Airdrop, email, doesn't really matter. Now we want to open up Illustrator and before we do anything, we want to resize this artboard. And you can do that by using the keyboard shortcut Shift and O and in your properties, make the width 1080 pixels and the height 1920 pixels. Great. Now in our files, we want to find where we have our sketch saved and simply drag and drop it onto our artboard, resizing it to fit into our artboard like so. And to keep things neat, we're going to navigate to view and select trim view so that we're only seeing what we have on our artboard. Okay, now select the image and find your transparency panel. If it's not here, just navigate to window and select transparency. In here, we want to set the blending mode to multiply and turn the opacity down a fair amount. Now in your layers panel, we can double click our layer to rename and click this area here to lock it. And now we can go in and add a new layer by selecting this button here. And we want to make sure that we drag that underneath the sketch layer. Okay, now that we've got everything set up, it's time to actually start creating our illustration. In your toolbar, select a color you want to use for the fill. I'm going to start with a color for my character's skin. Hit OK, and you also want to have your stroke disabled. You can do that by selecting it and then clicking this little white square with the red strike through. Okay, now select your pen tool, zooming in to the area you want to start with. And now we're going to create our base shape. To do that, click once to create your first anchor. Then in the area you want to place your second anchor, you're going to click again, but this time you're going to click and hold the button down before you release it. This is going to allow you to create a curve like this. Once you like the look of the curve, you can release the click and you'll see that you've made the first little part of your shape. Now you can use that same process to finish up our shape like so, connecting it back up to where we started. Now, if your shape isn't exactly how you want it, that's okay. Up in your toolbar, you'll see two arrows that look very similar. This one is the selection tool and it essentially allows you to move your shape around while the direct selection tool allows you to edit the anchors you created. So if you select the anchor point you want to edit, you can move it around like this. And you can also play with the anchor handles to tweak your curves like so. All right, so now when it comes to creating your second shape, let's say you want to create the neck, for example. You may be tempted to go in and start drawing in the shape like this. But if you zoom in, you'll see that we have these awful white spaces between both shapes. So instead, when you're creating your shapes, you want to leave some overlap. So you would draw the neck like this, knowing that the head and the shirt are going to be layered over the top. So when you're creating your shapes, you also need to be aware of how you order your layers. So at first glance, this looks okay. But if I change the color of the neck, you will realize that this layer is supposed to go under that head layer. To fix that, you can select your shape you want to reorder, navigate to Object, Arrange, and in this case, I'm going to select Send to Back. And also take note of the keyboard shortcuts, shift command left bracket to send things to the back and shift command right bracket to bring them to the front. I'm going to be using these shortcuts for the rest of this tutorial because they are a huge time saver. Okay, so now that we know how to create shapes and how to properly order them, I want to touch on strokes. 
So to draw with a stroke, you would need to make sure that you have a color selected for your stroke over in your toolbar and no fill selected. And then using the pen tool again, in the exact same way we created our shapes, we can draw in our strokes like so. And if you open your stroke panel, again, if you don't see it here, you can navigate to window to open it up from here. Now, essentially you can change the weight of the stroke. You can change the cap. And there are a bunch of other options in here, but they're not super important to us right now. But really, that's how easy it is to create lines in our work. So now you will see that through a combination of shapes, strokes, and properly layering, we are now easily able to build out our composition. I also need to take this moment to mention that if you're new to Illustrator and you haven't used the pen tool before, you might find yourself getting super frustrated with this tool at the beginning. But trust me, stick with it, practice using it, and your future self will thank you for it. And just another side note, I personally like doing this process by using the trackpad on my MacBook. I find it super quick, efficient, and comfortable, but you should feel free to use a mouse or tablet if you like. Find what works best for you. But a word of warning, if you decide to use Illustrator on the iPad, just know that a lot of the tools and functionalities that I'm describing in this tutorial are a bit different or don't exist in the same way that they do on the desktop version. Okay, so through the magic of editing, here are all of my shapes now built out. And to get rid of the sketch, all we need to do is toggle the visibility of our sketch layer off just like this. Now, you might be wondering how I created these shadow shapes. This is a slightly more advanced technique, so if you're already feeling overwhelmed with the basics, feel free to skip this for now and come back to it later. So the basic principle behind shadows is that you want to have slightly darker overlays in certain areas of your composition. Something like this. And in this case, I'm turning down the opacity slightly too. Now, the only problem with this method is that it is impossible to get your shadow 100% aligned to the base shape. So things are going to start to look a little messy, which might not seem like a huge deal, but if you want to build professional habits, there is a better way. Select the shape you want to add a shadow to and navigate to your tools panel and find the draw inside mode. Once you select that, you will see this box around your shape. And now essentially whatever you create will be constrained to that base shape, just like this which is not only much neater, but also saves so much time. And once you're done with that shape, all you need to do is select draw normal back in your tools panel. And what's great about this is if you ever decide to tweak the shape, your shadow will appear to the extent to which you drew it. Okay, if you're still watching, I'm giving you an automatic A plus for investing this time into learning and growing in your creative career. I have a whole stack of beginner friendly illustration tutorials that I'm going to be dropping very soon. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I can't stress this enough. You need to be subscribed. Think of this as an art school course you're signing up for. Alrighty, I'll see you over in my next tutorial. And if you like, say hi at Natashka on Instagram and or TikTok, I'm always down to make new creative friends. All right, bye for now.